and I think I'd leave it mostly at that. Robert. Lester. Thank you, Thank you very much. First sentence. <laughs> World Net Daily's correspondent, Dr. Jerome Corsi, <coughs> reports that yeah, in the U.S. Uh, District uh, Court uh, of the District of Columbia, a lawsuit has been filed by investigators in Ohio and Colorado concerning the president's social security number. Uh, second sentence. Birth he, he, he reports, no, no, I did not bring up the birth certificate. He reports that investigators Susan Daniels and John Sampson are asking why the president is using a social security number reserved for Connecticut applicants. And my question, did oh, do oh, you that's know? Two sentences, Lester. That, that, I, I, that two I, sentences. I, I, and yes. my question, do you know? <laughs> Uh, any Lester. record that the president ever had a mailing address in Connecticut? <laughs> Lester, I, uh, I, I, I am, I, 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 I know there are um, faithful readers of, uh, of your publication that despite... Including you. Uh, oh, well, I don't know that I would necessarily mark myself down as uh, uh, an avid reader or a faithful reader. I, I, I continue to be amazed, uh, Lester, that... Um, uh, two years after putting the president's birth certificate on the internet, um, without a hospital mm -hmm. and without Do you think a the doctor. Was born here last week? Do you think the president was born in the United States? I don't know. I'd love to get the real birth Pleasure. certificate. Wouldn't you? Uh, I've seen the real birth certificate. I put it on the internet, and uh, I appreciate your uh, I appreciate your forthrightness on the uh, on the birth answer. This is Thank you. If Obama really had a Hawaiian birth certificate, we would have seen it by now. It, what's been misquoted a lot of times is the Hawaiian authorities, two individuals stated they saw his birth certificate and it's for real. But notice in their statement, if you go back a couple weeks ago, it does not mention that it's a Hawaiian birth certificate. It also doesn't mention Kenya, but it does not mention it's a Hawaiian birth certificate. Our research has determined, based on the grandmother and other, he was born in Kenya. Then they came back to the United States and registered the birth, which is allowed in Hawaii. By being in, born out of the country, any of you, any citizens of the United States, if you travel, if both parents are from the United States and you're out of the country on vacation, once you go through immigration and come back, your child is considered natural born. When only one parent is a United States citizen, you have to look at the law in effect at that time. The law in effect at that time said the U.S. citizen must have lived here 10 years, and five of those years had to be after the age of 14. His mother was only 18 when she delivered. Now, some people come up and say, You're that's a technicality, 18 to 19. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't write the law. You didn't write the law. The law was written many years ago, and the, the cases have interpreted it goes by the date of the birth of the child. Based on that, if I'm correct, he's born in Kenya, he is only a naturalized citizen ineligible to be president of the United States. Next, even if he's born in Hawaii, he loses, even if he's born in Hawaii, he loses his citizenship when he goes to Indonesia. Now, let me just give you that again perspective so you understand. If any of us here go out of country and adopt a child, we bring the child to the United States. When we go through the paperwork and stuff, that child becomes a naturalized citizen of the United States, and that child takes your name in most instances. Well, Obama's parents divorced. His mother remarried in Hawaii. In his book, Barack Obama states, my stepfather returned to Indonesia before I did. When my mother and I went there, I immediately went to school. Indonesia in the 1960s was a turmoil. The only ones who were allowed in school were natural born citizens of Indonesia. Now he wasn't born there, but the statute go on further, you can be considered natural born if you're adopted or acknowledged by your stepfather. That's what happened. One or the other happened because he goes to school there for four years. We have a copy of his school record which is coming over again this afternoon. It's also on our website, ObamaCrimes.com, which shows his name, Barry Sotoro. It also states nationality, Indonesia, and religion, Islam. Now, at age 10, when he returns to, mom sends him back to live with her parents at age 10. This is significant, ladies and gentlemen. One of two things occurred. He either went through immigration or didn't. Now, 
then how could he have gotten back? Well, how did he get to Indonesia? Perhaps on an Indonesia passport, the same passport he uses later in life at age 20. We'll discuss that in a minute. If he goes through immigration, which we don't believe, he would then have been given a certification of citizenship for the United States, through the United States State Department, through immigration, and would have stated natural, naturalized, not natural born, because he was a natural child of Indonesia. And at that time, by the way, Indonesia did not provide for dual citizenship. If, on the other hand, and we think this is really what happened, we think if he didn't go through immigration, believe it or not, Barack Obama would be an illegal alien today. Not only not able to be president, but not able to be a United States Senator for the last three years from Illinois. And we really believe that's the case. Also, if Barack Obama did not change his name legally, his real name today would be Barry Sotoro. And we've asked for those documentations also. If it is, then he's been used, it's perjury and fraud the past number of years using a different name. Remember, let me go back to my opening statement. He graduated Harvard Law School. We're talking about a very educated person. He was head of the Harvard Law Review. He taught constitutional law. You know, his wife is an attorney. I personally think if and when the right court handles this matter, I think that Barack Obama and Michelle Obama and, and good old Howard Dean, the head of the Democratic National Committee, and others at the Democratic National Committee, and individuals on Obama's campaign staff should really be tried criminally, and many of them should go to jail. This really is the biggest hoax ever contemplated against our country in 200 years. Surrounding HIV testing, which is still plaguing so many of our communities, uh, which you all know a lot of that is due to homophobia. Uh, Barack has led by example. Uh, when we took our trip to Africa and visited his home country in Kenya, uh, we took a public HIV test uh, for the very point of showing uh, folks in Kenya that there is nothing to be embarrassed about in getting tested. Uh, and we did it as a couple. It's been quite a year since I've uh, spoken here last. Lots of ups, lots of downs, except for my approval ratings, which have just gone down. <laughs> but that's politics. It doesn't bother me. Besides, I happen to know that my approval ratings are still very high in the country of my birth. <laughs> here tonight are brought uh, to you by our friends at Goldman Sachs. So you don't have to worry, uh, they make money whether you laugh or not. <laughs> we do have uh, a number of notable guests uh, in attendance here tonight. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm most pleased uh, that Michelle accompanied me. She doesn't always go to these things. And there are, there are few things in life that are harder to find and more important to keep than love. Uh, well, love and a birth certificate. <laughs> the Jonas Brothers are here. They're out there somewhere. Sasha and Malia are huge fans. But uh, boys don't get any ideas. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? Fellow American patriots, I come to you today with my face hidden like a common criminal, as I must protect my family as well as myself, from a tyrannical government that is doing everything it can to silence patriots who believe in the Constitution, the law, and the United States of America as a free republic. I am so tired of hearing from people who can't seem to face facts, or that refuse to, I should say. 
A lot of people seem to think that the law that is on the books now is what applies to Mr. Obama. It does not. The law that was in force when he was born is what matters. Do you even know what the law was at the time that your Messiah was born? The law then is what mattered, and it was in effect from December 24, 1952 until November 13, 1986. And it reads, Section 301, as effective on December 24, 1952, when enacted in 1952, required a U.S. citizen married to an alien to have been physically present in the United States for 10 years, including five after reaching the age of 14, to transmit citizenship to foreign-born children. And yes, Mr. Obama is foreign-born, and I will get to that. The 10-year transmission requirement remained in effect from 12.01 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, December 24, 1952, through midnight, November 13, 1986, and is still applicable to persons born during that period. As originally enacted, Section 301 stated, The following shall be nationals and citizens of the United States at birth. A person born outside the geographical limits of the United States and its outlying possessions of parents, one of whom is an alien, and the other a citizen of the United States, who, prior to birth, such a person was physically present in the United States or its outlying possessions for a period or periods totaling not less than 10 years, at least five of which were after attaining the age of 14 years. The link to this law is given in the description of this video and it's on page 7 of the doc. Here is what the law means. According to the federal law at the time, which is what is applicable to Barry, if you have two parents that are American citizens, then you are an American citizen at birth, no matter the birthplace. But if you have only one parent who is an American citizen, which is applicable to Barry, then the parent who is the citizen has to have been in the country for 10 years, at least 10 years of residency in the U.S., and five of those years have to be after the age of 14. Mary's mother was 18 when she was born. She would have had to have been 19 in order for him to be natural born and eligible to be president. Oh, that's just a small technicality, people say. It doesn't really matter. Yes, it does. The law is the law. It was the law and it applied to Mr. Sotoro, or Dunham, or Obama, or Giggles, or whatever his real name is, because no one really knows. We can only go by what he says. He sealed all of his records, all of them. I wonder why he does not want anyone to see his college records. Could it be that he went to school as a foreign student here? Could it? Do you think? He's a fraud, plain and simple. My source for a fictional or non-existent law that many liberals have messaged, commented, and spewed out of their mouths with their talking point brains too smoked up on medical weed to actually research anything, and they state, if one parent is a U.S. citizen, then the child is a U.S. citizen. End of story. No, it isn't. Obama was born in Kenya. Mr. Obama himself admitted to being born in Kenya in a debate during his U.S. Senate campaign between himself and Alan Keyes. Keyes faulted Obama for not being a natural born citizen when he was running for Senate. And Obama quickly retorted, So what? I'm running for Illinois Senator, not the presidency. Self admitting that he was not eligible for the office of president. Secondly, there was an article posted in a Kenyan online newspaper titled Kenyan Born Obama, all set for the U.S. Senate. It was posted in 2004. Links to these articles are in the description as well. Download this info as soon as you get to it, as I am sure that Barry's handlers will have this evidence destroyed as soon as possible. Fellow Patriots, I am unsure why so many of his supporters refuse to accept the fact that this man is an imposter and that he is a direct threat to everything this country and the Constitution of the United States of America stand for. He is a threat to everything our brave men and women have fought and died for. He is treading on everything our forefathers bled and died for, to put in place to protect us, to protect us from people like him. He is shredding the Constitution, making a mockery of the legal system, and laughing at us, all of us. Do you think that him and his cronies are only laughing behind closed doors at the birthers, at the opposition to his cabinet? No! 
He is laughing the hardest at all of the idiotic blind sheeple that can't see the forest for the trees. <laughs>